This video describes how to configure two GRE tunnels for high availability on a Juniper SRX Edge device to connect your site to Force Point One. To connect your site to Force Point One using GRE, you will follow six high level steps. First, you will need to retrieve the information you will be using during the tunnel configuration from the Force Point One portal. Next, you will need to configure the tunnels to the primary and secondary data centers. Then, configure a routing instance and routing options. Next, configure security zones to include the tunnel interfaces. You will also configure a monitoring probe that is sent through the primary GRE tunnel to enable tunnel failover. Finally, you will verify the GRE tunnel connectivity. Log in to the Force.1 portal and navigate to Analyze, Tunnels, to retrieve the cloud side setup information. In this example, the site was previously created in the Force.1 portal with two GRE tunnels, primary and secondary, for high availability. Click Setup Info for the primary tunnel of your site. Copy the cloud IP address and the monitoring IP address to a notepad. These values will be used when you configure the GRE tunnel on your Edge device. Repeat the same process for the secondary tunnel. Note that the monitoring IP address is the same for both tunnels. Also note that the status you see for GRE tunnels is not an indication of the actual tunnel status. This will show us up as soon as the cloud side of the GRE tunnel has been configured in the Force.1 portal. In this environment, the Juniper router is connected to the internet with a static public IP address provided by the internet service provider. The systems of the site are on the 192.168.122.0 private network, which is the internal subnet added during the site configuration. Switch over to the Juniper SRX console. To access the command line interface, type CLI. To review the pre-existing configuration on the router, enter Show Configuration. Note, you can see the two security zones that are defined. Trust for the incoming interface, and untrust for the external interface. As you view more of the configuration, you can see the router has these two interfaces configured. Next, you can see the routing options that indicate that any internet-bound traffic is directed to the gateway IP address provided by the internet service provider. Change into configuration mode. Use the set interfaces command to create the tunnel interface for the primary connection. The tunnel source IP address is 192.168.123.5 which is the IP address of the external facing interface. The tunnel destination is the primary tunnel cloud IP address that you noted earlier. Use a dummy private IP address, such as 10.10.10.1, that is not used at your site, as the inner tunnel IP address. Now configure the tunnel interface for the secondary tunnel connection. For the destination on the secondary connection, be sure to use the secondary cloud IP address that was noted earlier. Use a different dummy private IP address, such as 10.10.20.1. To verify the configuration for the interfaces, use the show command. Next, you will create a forwarding type routing instance called root underscore to underscore F1. Define the primary route for the routing instance through the primary tunnel interface. Using the show routing instances command, you can see the instance type is set to forwarding and the routing options point to the primary tunnel interface. Now create a routing table group for the interface routes called root underscore via underscore F1. Next, import the routing tables inet.0 and root underscore to underscore F1 dot inet.0 to the new routing table group. Use the show routing options command to verify your configuration. 
the next few commands will configure the type of traffic. When using only Cloud Swig, you can only redirect ports 80 and 443 through the GRE tunnel. Each type of traffic is coming from the site's private network and directed to the root underscore to underscore F1 routing instance. As a result, the traffic will be sent through the GRE tunnel to force point 1. Next, you will send all other traffic straight to the internet. Alternatively, if you are using force point 1 firewall, you will redirect all your traffic through the GRE tunnel with these commands instead of the previously used ones. Use the show command to display the configuration of the newly created filter. When working with filters, it is important that they are listed in order. Then attach the firewall policy to the incoming interface. Assign the two underscore internet filter to the incoming interface of the router. Then use the show command to verify the filter is applied. Next, you will use the security zone command to create a zone called GRE to F1 and associate it with both GRE interfaces. You will allow the ping service in this zone to ensure that the monitoring packages are allowed. Using the show security zones command, you can see the new security zone. Next, create a security policy called GRE underscore policy and allow all traffic from the trust security zone which defines the internal network in this example configuration, to the GRE to F1 security zone. By using the show command, you can see the GRE underscore policy has been created. The source, destination, and application are all set to any. Next, you can define the real-time performance monitoring or RPM probe, called ping underscore primary underscore DC, with a test, called primary underscore tunnel, based on ICMP ping. Ensure that it is sent through the primary GRE tunnel. In the next set of commands, you will define the parameter settings of the RPM probe, such as the probe count, probe interval, test interval, successive loss, and total loss. Note the 10.10.10.2 IP address is the next hop of the dummy IP address you used as the inner tunnel IP address of the primary tunnel. Verify the RPM probe parameter settings for the primary tunnel. Now define the action taken when the probe fails using an IP monitoring policy called failover. Note the 10.10.20.2 IP address is the next hop of the dummy IP address you used as the inner tunnel IP address of the secondary tunnel. Use the show command to verify the configuration of the IP monitoring policy. Type commit to save all the configuration changes and then type exit to exit configuration mode. You can verify the status of the primary tunnel using the show services IP monitoring status command. The probe status should be set to pass, and the failover action should indicate that it has not been applied. Finally, navigate to a workstation at the site, and open a web browser window. In the search field, type what's my IP, then press enter. The public IP address is the cloud IP address, associated with the primary connection for the site, in the 4.1 portal.